All right, traders, welcome back. Today is July 12th, it's nine o'clock in the morning. And guys, today what I have for you is a review on the Swiss franc. Now, what I wanna cover today is petering into the level, basing before the level, taking a counter trend trade and things of that nature. And so I have this level marked out here on the Swissy, a drop base, very nice rally that comes into that. But what I wanna show you guys here is I wanna show you, that I actually, this was brought to me by one of our inner circle members who identified this and he points that out and uh, basically says, is anybody watching this Swissy level? What do you think? And that's what we do here at Trading Prices. We have a group of traders that will go back and forth with each other and talk about levels and um, talk about trades that they're making, P&Ls and things of that nature. And that way, everyone can go through the strategy that you've learned inside the accelerator and execute it in the same way. And I responded, I said, hey, Mark, the trend's gonna be down and we'll be below 40 if we hit that anytime soon. And then a little bit later, I did get that alert. Something came out, the euro and the pound at 3 a.m. Eastern, all of those took a nosedive and it looks like the Swissy came down at the same time. So, but again, guys, here at Trading Price, we're trying to focus on high quality risk reducing trades. If there was a highlighter here that I could highlight on a picture, I would highlight this. Remember, we're trying to focus on high quality risk reducing trades. That's what we're trying to do. So what I went over here with him was what I'm about to go over here inside of the actual chart. Now that time has passed, we can go back and kind of getting a better idea of whether or not we had a really good understanding of what we were talking about. And you guys can judge me on whether or not this makes sense. And please, I'd love to hear your feedback on this as well. So one of the things that we talk about, and I got to zoom in here, so you're not gonna see this level. So take a mind shot, you have this drop base rally, really nice rally out of it. But when we enter into this level, you see the precipitous downtrend, right? Lower highs and lower lows in price, almost every time you see that impulse, and guys, on all of these retracements back up, anytime we try to rally, not only do, are we not able to reach above 60 on these, but we're barely even to reach like above 40 sometimes. So it's very, very weak as we come into our level. That is problem number one that I have with taking this trade. Now, what I did say back here was uh, it came in really weak, but it did count you, catch a bounce and I, I added another chart there. I'd really prefer to short this bounce. I can't find anything to short against though. Um, some kind of news came out and there was nothing really to short against here. We hadn't gotten back up into this kind of area. It's not the best drop base drop that I would have liked to see, but there was nothing really for me to short against on this bounce. Now, if you took this bounce with multiple contracts, guys, one of the reasons why you can be a counter trend trader is you just gotta know where to put your targets in. And the reality is, is that when you go through the accelerator and you take a counter trend trade with RSI less than 40, you better know where to place your targets. And I'll give you a little piece of advice here for free, is your target needs to be below the latest low, which is right here, okay? So you bounced up to there. That is something that we cover inside the accelerator. It's not only like, where turning points are in price, but if you're gonna take a counter trend trade with RSI low and it doesn't meet any of the other, you know, stacking the odd studies that we cover, how do you manage that trade? Because finding turning points is not the hardest part of trading. Managing trades, not letting winners turn into losers. <laughs> we want losers to turn into winners, but we don't want winners to turn into losers when the move stops, when to expect price to reach new highs and things of that nature. This is what makes you a real trader is knowing those things and understanding those things and reducing your risk all at the same time. So I'm gonna get back to it on this analysis. I got off on a little tangent there, but it's just so, so important. Why it's so important to understand the predictable nature of price and why it's so important to stick to rules. Because the reality is, is price could come, can it, it could come in here and it could skyrocket. That's absolutely a possibility. However, what I'm seeing here is these lower highs in price, these lows in price. And what I also noticed was this kind of divergence that was happening here. 
in price as we have lower lows in price. Sorry, we have these lower lows in price, but we have higher highs on the RSI indicator inside of a level. Now, normally that would be a very good odds enhancer for us. However, one of the things we also cover inside of trading price is called petering into the level, which all this basing is occurring before we enter into that very high quality one hour level that we have right here, that drop base rally. It's pretty tight. There's a lot less risk involved in that. And as we come in, we come into the level guys at 22. All right, so that alone right there is enough for me not to take the trade. But then when you couple all of this basing that comes in, and a lot of people got head faked out of this with this positive divergence, but inside of the accelerator, what you're gonna learn is not only is this really bad for us, but this basing completely tears the trade apart for us on this. It makes absolutely no sense for uh, the way I teach and the way that I trade. Um, and anyone that's gone through the accelerator to take that trade. So, uh, and then here's what happened is we go through and we did balance, but again, guys, every time we make those lower highs in price and those lower lows, every single time we even try, is there's no buying pressure here as we come into this level outside of the bounce that we got here. And when we got that bounce, look where we bounced up to 35. We bounced up to a 35 on the RSI. So I never say zero, but there's like a 99% chance that we don't form a new high up here when we come in this week and catch a bounce that's that week. 35 is very weak on the RSI. And so what do we do? We base and then once we breach the level, boom, we have this down. Here's kind of another bonus for you is once we have this breach, all right, there's a lot of people that bought at the uh, low of this level. And when price comes back up, all they want to do is sell to not lose money. They're down, they're down, they're down. Oh my gosh, I'm not down as much, I'm not down as much, I'm not down as much. Okay, I'm gonna break even. Boom, I sell. And uh, I had a review with one of our students this morning. And if I would have seen this yesterday, I would have caught this short right here. This is what happens. It's a psychology thing of trading that always comes up when a level is breached. It's gonna come back up and normally test it. And um, if, you, if you're this week, you're gonna continue. And that would have been a really, really nice trade. But we come back up into the level again and we fall. Now, it actually kind of looks like we might be thinking about, starting to think about changing trend. We don't have the big, strong impulses down as we're in here. And all of a sudden, we are at 52 on the RSI, which we haven't been anywhere close to that in this downtrend since Thursday. So a lot of things that we covered here, guys, but I just wanted to show you uh, why we didn't take this trade and kind of how I interact back and forth with our students in the inner circle and kind of what we're looking at all together as a team because um, there's no way that, I mean, I shouldn't say there's no way you can't do this alone, but it is a hell of a lot easier to do this when you can collaborate with other people and they can identify things that you might not be seeing. And guys, I get jazzed up every time I'm in the inner circle. I'm seeing levels. Like this level was brought to me. It's a good level. It's just the other stacking the odd studies don't work for this trade for me. But I see stuff all the time inside the inner circle that, you know, I'm the one that's supposed to be coaching and motivating and giving the team everything, but every time I'm getting motivated. So that's really, really cool to see. And, and I'm also learning more and I'm also seeing new things that, you know, there's like 50 different markets. So I'm seeing some markets that I don't typically look at and uh, I'm seeing those things play out. So really, really cool. And hopefully this helps guys, but kind of rambling on now guys. But uh, yeah, I hope with that you have learned a little bit about uh, counter trend trading and uh, petering into the level and RSI. And even when there's divergence, when we have this kind of thing, what we're looking at. So, all right guys, with that, take it easy and I will catch you later.